Well, we're here with this little uh, 1964 sunfish. We're gonna go over it. Uh, the um, we took all the parts that we could off today. The hull we found several spots in the hull that are very soft, and that means we have the option of splitting seams, opening it up, trying to figure out what happened to foam inside, and uh, replacing it. Uh, putting in, taking out old foam, new, putting in new foam etc and it just gets to be where it's not cost effective to uh, do it even even if you're just doing it for fun we've uh, been there done that we don't have a need to do it again but uh, I missed a few spots when I went out and um, bought this boat last year that I probably wouldn't have bought it if I had taken a little uh, better look at it because right in here I don't know if it'll show up. I mean, that's very little pressure. That thing's moving almost an inch. And there's supposed to be a foam block in there with adhesive foam holding that rigid. So it's really bad on this port side. Starboard side's about the same. There's another block up in the bow here. Feels pretty good there. That's nice and firm. But back here, you hear it. You can see it that's that's too soft unless you want to you know put a inspection port in and go in there and try to mess with it and figure out what's going on we have found a few boats where some kind of chemicals gotten inside the foam's degraded and the foam the white block foam what i call the structural foam is just completely gone it's like i don't know where it went to and then uh so that's one of the issues, this boat. Uh, there is a crack in the fiberglass under the lip here that would need a repair. There's one on the chine that needs a pretty involved repair. I mean, somebody knew at one point, because when we bought it, my first clue should have been that the uh, drain plugs were either missing or out. So they, they had kind of known. They, they sold it to somebody else. That person didn't do anything with it for a while. And then we came across it. Uh, the other issue, 19, this is 1964, that we haven't come across. We've read about, read about it. This is the first time we've come across it. As you can see, all around this deck edge, and I know a lot of you folks are like, oh yeah, I see that all the time. All the way around. The first finger coming back in here is just cracked all the way around. I've heard it on newer boats, like Pearson, early Pearsons, but this, once again, is there's a flex there just with, you know, 20 or 30 pounds of hand pressure. Can't imagine sitting on that. So we'd have to go in there and put in a little flange all the way around a cockpit, reinforce, do everything else. We haven't done that before. I've got no desire to learn how to do it. Um, so there's a lot of things on this boat speaking to us to go and save my spirit. Take all the all the bronze and balers and save me, put me on other boats. So that's what we're gonna do. In the uh, combing, every one of the little, uh, these, these rivet nuts into the deck, every one of them's corroded up. So when you go to take the screw out, it just spins the rib nut, so the one way to get it out is to pry it out. So we we might try that or to cut it out, but I hate to cut uh, this boat. I might put it out front. No, it's going to the uh, it's going to the great boat dump in the sky. One other little thing about these early boats: um, all the hulls should have some kind of vent, so when they heat up and they expand. They don't pop a seam. A lot of boats, you'll see them right on here on this wall. But for several years early on, they drilled a hole right through the uh, data, serial number plate into the uh, into the hole, and that's your little vent. In some cases, they just drilled the hole and then just put the little plate over it. So if you see that hole somewhere in your hull, don't go, ooh, better fill that in. That's a vent hole to keep this thing from swelling up. 
and uh, popping a seam, which it will do. And also when it swells, it'll loosen the uh, blocks. And that could be what happened here. Maybe that block popped loose, fell over. I haven't flipped the boat. That's one way you can tell when you flip, you can hear all kinds of little blocks uh, rattling around inside. The halyard block and the halyard cleat seem pretty good, but once again, right here, if I hadn't been in a hurry and excited, I would have noticed somebody's done something back here. So they knew they had a leak or maybe these were getting pulled out and they thought, well, I'll just glue it in place with some sealant. Well, that's uh, one way to do it. So the last little interesting feature, these early fiberglass boats have this little cove in the transom. That's where the uh, carriage bolt goes down through this hole. It holds the uh, horizontal hinge plate that the uh, rudder assembly swivels on and then the little latch plate comes off the bottom and the uh, vertical hinge plate comes down and just snaps into that and the uh, carriage bolt with the thumb nut and a spring plate on the top is what holds all that together. So this is the same type of hardware they used on the wooden boats. So when they made the, I don't know, I'm curious, you know, why they didn't just step this out a little further and avoid having to cut this little cove here. Because in the wooden boats, it does, it goes straight through the transom. It's a solid wood transom and that carriage bolt just drilled right through the middle of it. So I don't know if they did this on purpose or that was, they must have liked it because it stayed around for quite a long time. And then when they went to the new style rudder, that little cove even stayed around for a little bit after that. But then eventually they took it out and uh, flattened the face of the transom. So this is 1964, so probably uh, the uh, this plastic, there's fiberglass and foam, or maybe no foam. I'm gonna take a ride to our local facility tomorrow, unless you're near uh, Newport News, Virginia, and you want a hole that has no foam in it, then uh, you better call us quick. But otherwise, we'll get on to the next one, but hope y'all are doing uh, great. That about does it.